This is the Owns Odyssey podcast. Thank you for being here. Hey, and welcome to this week's episode of Owns Odyssey. Thank you very much for being here tonight. If you like this podcast, please support us on Patreon. And it's really nice that you've commented on the videos on YouTube. It's lovely to hear from you. We want to hear from you. We're going to be going live in the next couple of weeks. So I'm here with Adam. What's happening? How yo, yo, yo. Sup, B. <laughs> Give us some of that. There we go. Sweet. Let's get tight. We can't do it. We're not close enough. How are you? Good, good. Yourself? Brilliant. You've had a nice week. I have. A little bit of a holiday. We're going to get into that very later on. Thanks for joining us in this week's episode of Owens Odyssey. Tell everyone about this podcast, please. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Good to see you, Adam. It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. It's been, it's been a, week. a week. Fucking hell. Long we don't time. We don't, I don't want to see Adam during the week because he's a fucking hate him. Yeah. I just show up, up here every... What? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Again, the worst research <laughs> podcast in the world. I got on to Adam before this. I said, "Could you do you mind finding out what fuck a day this is?" <laughs> sure, I will. Yeah, come in here. Like, How are you, Adam? What day is it? Sunday. I fucking makes me mad because I'm trying to produce a, pod, a worldwide podcast. I'll get it right one of the days. Yeah, it doesn't really matter the day of the week, does it? No, <laughs> not at all. What day is it? Shoot. I'm going to say Wednesday. Correct, I think. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it's great to, great to be here and uh, we're going to talk about, we've got a couple of questions to cover in this week's podcast. We're going to be talking about like Germany and is it strong, is it a strong place just generally? Are the people strong and is the society over there tough? <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem with Germany? No, no, no. Okay, then what's the, what's the issue? I don't know. <laughs> 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 also, we're going to be answering a very interesting question from the public. This was a very interesting one, Adam. This was about a lady who wrote in to me, got my email address, probably fancies me. Very nice. She, yes, because I've got back to her since. Really? Yeah. Ask for pictures. She likes me. I like her. We're going to meet up. But anyway, she's having an issue with her boyfriend. They're both in an open relationship together. And who has the issue? Well, let me read out to you. Um, me and my partner have been in an open relationship for six months now. We talked about always being transparent with who we were going to sleep with. But recently, I think he's been sleeping with someone else without telling me. Do I confront him? Is that not the whole thing with an open relationship? And that's why I have you on the show. Kinky. Dirty right. pervert. <laughs> that could be, but she said that she likes the transparency, but she feels like that he's off with girls while not telling her who he's with. Oh, okay. That is a problem. Think so? Yeah, yeah. He should be telling her. Should he, yeah? I'd say so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then it's just like cheating, isn't it? So you reckon he should be giving the whole game away? Fucking give her a Throw heads up. Throw himself under the fucking bus? Give her a heads up, at least, if she's fine with the open relationship. What if it's a friend of his that he's fallen in love with slowly? <laughs> That's quite the scenario. You are one sick fuck. <laughs> you're one sick fuck, but I agree with you. So you're saying that he should tell her. Yeah, just tell I don't her. think he should. Why? Because when you popped out your mother's fanny, Adam. Right. And you just came out, you're like, what? You made your own choices for the rest of your life. You didn't ask somebody, is this what I want to do? Is this the person I am? Can you tell me who I am? No. You get out there and you make yourself free. You don't look for answers from other people or decisions to be made. You get out there and you... How are you, Johnny? <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. So just do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, pretty much. Fair enough. But in saying that, I would be in bits if I found out that my partner was cheating on me. Oh, that would be awful. I'd be, dis I'd be just... I'd be in the room in the fetal position. But do whatever you want. Yeah, whatever works for you. <laughs> What advice would you give to her, though? You, you reckon she should confront him? I think they should have a talk. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah. That's my advice. <laughs> <laughs> Is there not more to that, no? <laughs> no, just have a talk. Okay, Doesn't right. Doesn't have to be about that either. There you go. That's your answer. <laughs> I don't want to give her name away, but it's there, Monica. And Monica, Adam here is saying, have the talk. Have confront talk. him. Early in the morning, catch him around eight o'clock. 
he'd be going up to the bathroom, God knows what, you know, he's going to brush his teeth, he's going to have his breakfast. Confront him and see what he's got to say for himself. Catch him early. Don't, late eight o'clock won't work. Take him off guard. Take him off guard. And say, hey, can we talk about this? Comfy. Yeah. Please check out my Patreon. Now we're going to get on to Germany. Is it a tough country? Is it a strong place? The Germans, of course, have been known over the years to be a very strong economy. Massive into exports. They've got the BMWs. They've got the Mercedes-Benz. All sorts of technology coming out of Germany, seeping into the households of people. Not only that, sports brands, Puma, Adidas, at once were friends, now separated forever. Aldi, Lidl. You know who I'm talking about. It's the Germans. Big boys. Big boys with leather jackets on. So I went to Berlin for a few days anyway. I said, no, I'm talking like I'm presenting a TV show somewhere. <laughs> Why is it so intense? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> went to Berlin the other day. Have you ever been? I was there a good few years ago. Yeah, yeah you have to go, yeah. man. It's class. I was there a good few years ago, yeah. Yeah, I would recommend if you get a chance, go. <laughs> okay, I might go someday. You should. I mean, the first time for everything. So it was an uh, eye-opening place. People were, it's hard to say in words, but they were crazy. Right. What did you get up to over there? Well, the first night we went there, went to a park. Very quiet night. Went to, got a kebab. Lovely kebabs there in Germany. And met some friends there. Got some friends from Venezuela that were there. Met those people, had a few beers, walked around the place, and then we met a fella called Noel. He brought us to like different bars around the city. And then around three o'clock in the morning, he goes, by the way, I know of one other bar, if you want to join me. And we're like, right, yeah, sounds good. So he goes, follow me. So we started walking across Berlin. Half three, four o'clock in the morning. We're getting tired, a bit jet lagged. Flight was two hours, but we're still a bit jet lagged. We were tired. And he was like, just down the street here, over here. Quick, follow. And we were following this lad around the place. He brought us to what I can only describe as, it was like a sex dungeon. Right. It was five euro to get in at like four o'clock in the morning. Everyone in there was, it was heaving sex. Were they actually fucking? I couldn't really tell because I took off my glasses when I walked in, you see, and they all, because they all fogged up. Okay. They fogged up from the steam of the sex that was going on there. Mm. So I had to take them off and I was looking around and uh, I couldn't really see what was going on because I was like, what the fuck is going on over there? It was like dark, moody corners with people just gyrating on top of each other. You didn't part- participate? Took it all in though. Took it all in. Didn't participate, no. No? Mm. It's a shame. Yeah. I'd be a bit shy in this situation. It would be a bit awkward. Would right. you? Yeah, yeah. What would you do in that situation? Would you go in? Do what you done. Take, take it all in. You'd be doing more than that, you dirty fucker. <laughs> You'd be in there going, who wants it? Who wants yeah. this? <laughs> Whip it out. Whip it out. <laughs> you would though, wouldn't you? Or would I you? How, how stuck in would you get out of, in a scale of one to stuck in, Bill? I can't see myself in that situation whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think you would be. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You must have some situation good on there. You must have some. Uh, you, were do- you were dogging two weeks ago, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's different, though. True. That's, that's planned. It's, you're not brought there by a name called Hans. Okay. I haven't given his name away yet. What? Well, I thought you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I told you that before the podcast started, man. Oh, all right. And the first thing I said was, don't tell him his name. Don't all tell right. him there. No, so don't do tell leave, him his name. Leave Fine. his address out, too, yeah. Actually, I have his address on the phone. Okay. This is the weird thing. For those of you that are wondering, we met this fella in a pub called Hans. And he was a weird man. Not weird in a bad way, but weird in a nice way. Okay. Because we well, walked into a pub and we saw him in there and he was drinking with two other owl lads. Mid-70s, I'd say. And they looked really old and they were like really kind of like German, tough looking, no emotions at all. And myself and my friend from Venezuela walked in. He's got like long dreadlocks. This German fellow goes, turn around, turn around. And we thought he was saying to us, turn around and go. Like, as in like, because we, this was like a, in the middle of nowhere in Berlin, like just some sort of corner of a suburb of Berlin. 
What's yeah. like a fancy place like the Bergenheim or one of those places where everyone gets their mickey out? It's like a random old lad pub in the middle of Berlin. And we met this fella anyway, it's called Hans. He was like, turn around. So we thought he was telling us to fuck off. But then he goes, I love the hair. Or did he say that now? He said something like that anyway. Actually, no, he didn't say that. He, he said something in German because he didn't know where we're from. Okay. So we thought he was also like saying something to us like fuck off in German. So then in the corner, there was this Spanish speaking guy. He was like Argentinian. And he goes to, he said over to my friend Miguel. He said, oh, uh, hablas español. And the guy was like, yeah, I speak Spanish. So the German guy, Hans, kept talking to us. He was like, oh, I was what a good, like he was talking in German, like really kind of sounded very tough. Okay. So we were like, this guy doesn't like us at all. And Miguel was talking Spanish to this other guy. And I was in the middle going, what's going on here? Anyways, Hans was like, where are you guys from? And I'm like, I'm Ireland. And he goes, Venezuela. And he goes, oh, last week uh, I had a good friend from Australia in here. Very good person. Astonishing person. Kept going, astonishing. And then he goes, will we have a drink? So we were like, okay. Seems like a sound. He's beginning to get sound, but we still didn't trust him. Because his two friends were at the bar. They were drinking, our lads drinking, and they were just looking at us like this. So we were like, just the Germans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the tons. I just left a bit of a space there. <laughs> I thought there was more coming. No, well, <laughs> there is. We, we were like, just like, right, we'll have a drink. He got us Jaeger bombs. Or sorry, Jägermeisters, which is probably German. Is that German? I think so, yeah. Sounds German. Good drink. Good drink. He's like, he drank his. We were just sipping ours. Because this is our, like, we were tired from the night before. So we were just like, he goes, oh, you have to drink it. And we, like, drank it back then and we were steamboats. Then he was just chatting away to us, having the fucking crack. He was, like, saying, I come here every night. And he was 75 years of age. Just now, lad, loving his life. Now, just loving life. Smoking cigarettes like it didn't matter. He was like, yeah, yeah. Smoking and he just, I was, I was watching him for about 10 minutes and I couldn't get enough of him. <laughs> I, was, I was milking him in. If his body was a teat, I was like. <laughs> we went down to, the, there was a jukebox there as well. So we went down to the jukebox, threw in a few songs. Hans came down then, he started putting on some songs too. He goes, if you like this song, you can uh, write it down and remember it and remember me. He was in the toast. He wasn't dodgy, like he wasn't like a foot touch or anything. <laughs> So he put on Pink Floyd or something like that. And then we wrote that down, the song he put on. It was like a weird Pink Floyd song. That was it then, really. Sounds like a good time. It was, yeah, but there's no end to that story, really. <laughs> but there's a bit more. There's, there was an Irish guy then that turned up. Right. And he lends in. He like looked so Irish in there. He had red hair. He, he had brought us to a techno party the night before. So he was a bit rough for wear. Okay. And he was wearing like a leather jacket and he was like, Hey boys, you know? oh, I thought it was Hans who brought you to the party. No, Hans brought us into his pub, really. His pub? Well, it wasn't his pub, but he was in there. And he goes, this is my local. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. we were like hanging out in there for a while anyway. How was the Jack No Party? It was good. Yeah, very, very good. If you ever go to a place in Berlin called, it's called Syphos, I think. Syphos? Sisyphus. Sisyphus. Named after the Greek uh, god. Or maybe some Greek story where there's some fella trying to push a boulder up a hill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it keeps coming down to hit him. But this place was like a techno party full of absolute lunatics. When I went in there first, I was like, fucking hell, this is so weird. Like everyone was like chilled out going, yeah, like just, you know, drinking beers. But they're like panned out or there's like three people kissing. Or there was like a fellow with his dog, like a little poodle. And he was like fanning himself. And okay. he was like just dressed in almost nothing. And... We were like, what in the fuck is going on here? But my friend from Venezuela was loving it. What well, you said about the phones earlier, it's a good idea. Oh, yeah, I... sorry, yeah. yeah. When we were in there first, they put, it, they put stickers on the phone so you couldn't actually take any pictures Yeah. when you're walking in the door. So for the first like hour, I was like, I want to take a picture of that fellow. Not in a perverted way. Yeah, it's just yeah. like it's, it's a just, memory. It's just crazy stuff. Like, <laughs> like I'm not a sick fuck. Or am I? Questionable. <laughs> Questionable. But I uh, know it was good, good fun. Very good. So you recommend Germany? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been? I must go to Berlin someday. You have to go, man. It's great. And I told you, I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, man, you definitely have to go. <laughs> I'm serious, you have okay, to go. Okay, okay, I'll go, I'll go. Next time. Next time. I'll get there. Yeah. All right. What pisses you off? Let me know. Uncolly at gmail.com. 
This is Orn's Odyssey. That's a shit name anyways is for a podcast. I'm getting sick of it. Every time someone asks me what's the name of the podcast, I'm like, fucking Orn's Odyssey, man. <laughs> How are you keeping in it? Yeah, yeah, good, good. It's been a long week without you, man. Really? I know, I miss you yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, good. What you been up to? <laughs> Fuck all. <laughs> just, just working. <laughs> really? Working yeah. nine to five, Dolly Parton job? Working nine to five, doing an ad for Aldi there yesterday nice. up in Dublin. How was that? Interesting. We were recording a carrot dancing really? behind uh, DJ Deck. Oh, class. Yeah, for Electric Picnic. Behind DJ Tech? DJ Dex. DJ Dex, so okay. Into, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've been at, recording carrots. Yeah. Electric Picnic, when is that? August, August I August, think. okay. I think it's August. Mm. So you, will you get to go there as well? I think I'll be working at that as well. Oh, yeah. class. Yeah. So you'll see the video? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Can't wait. <laughs> what was it about? Oh, you told me what's about. It's about a carrot. Carrot dan- dancing. Mm-hmm. Like Behind, that? <laughs> just like that. Behind DJ Dex. Class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. It was a very l- odd way to spend three hours. Uh, was it a local carrot? <laughs> local carrot. His name's Kevin, actually. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Keep the carrots local, folks. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Sounds like good fun anyway. Good crack, yeah, yeah. So you're there for a few days in Dublin? Up there for two days, yeah. Two days. You drove up and down? Yeah, camped up in Clendalkin. Camped? Camped in Clendalkin, yeah. Did you? I did, yeah. Yourself, in the car? I, I had a tent. So. Okay, <laughs> all right, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's always a good thing to do when you're camping. Yeah, yeah, bring a tent. So you, did you pay for camping or did you just turn up? There's a campsite there in Clendalkin. Ah, okay. 20 euro a night. Not bad. Beats paying for a hotel up there. Did you have anyone else in the tent with you? I'm afraid not. You mother. Just me, me, just me. Yeah? And, yeah. <laughs> What's that mean? Good hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Nobody wants to know that, man. <laughs> That's sick shit, honestly. Yeah, it is. Nobody wants to know about that shit, man. You've... <laughs> So what is next? <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. <laughs> Please check out my Patreon. This is the news headlines <laughs> of the week. <laughs> and let's have a little look to see what's going on across the world. We're here on the internet checking out what's going on. Rory McIlroy burn- abandoned his divorce plans. He's getting back together with the missus. Really? Seems to be. I didn't even so know he's said, getting divorced. Well... That's, that's why it's so hard to keep up with the times now because there's so much information out there. What too much. It, too much, you think? Too much information. Yeah. Too many headlines. The world is fucked, man. I think so? The world is fucked. Do you think so? Mm. I don't think it... I don't know. I don't know, man. Nah, it's not so bad, actually. You've, you've convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> I've turned you around there with a bit a good philosophical talk. I don't know, man. Yeah. That was one of Socrates' quotes. Everything is okay. Yeah. It's going to be all fine because at the end of the day, you walk outside, there's a tree out there. That tree doesn't give a shit who gets voted in to watch it. Mm. Right? I think people, right? people need to throw away the phones and act like a tree more often. I think so too. But you can't watch porn on a tree, hey? That's yeah, another valid point. True. But you can look at the branches and go, I'll have that. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> just a little look inside our two minds. <laughs> Kim Kardashian goes braless in a strappy white t-shirt. Right. I have a feeling you're looking at that later on, huh? Yeah, I'm intrigued, so intrigued. As soon as you get home, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> quick as you can, bah, bah, bah. knock at the door. No photos <laughs> there, no? Adam, what are you doing there? <laughs> get out, I'm just after finishing the podcast. Get out. <laughs> Adam, please. We just want to talk to you. You've been in that room for weeks. <laughs> I'll just get show out them. and then like, show them the photo and they'll all understand <laughs> <laughs> screens everywhere yeah <laughs> just, like, <laughs> all over the room looking to your brain going <laughs> just watching like just all Kim Kardashian <laughs> three, <laughs> just 360 yeah. of Kim Kardashian Bralis I know what you're like <laughs> hey man I'm there myself yeah I'm gonna have to make that happen Ben Affleck has relapsed after JLo's divorce his fears going around relapsed what was he taking Looks like he's got a little brown bag in front of him, but it could be, I don't know, if he's on something heavy or is it just like a snack box he's eating? Mm-hmm. The old snack, spot, snack box can be heavy enough too. <laughs> <laughs> in fairness, it can. Yeah, it could be damage. considered a drug. Yeah. They're oh. very addicting. Though. Oh, man. I popped into a garage on the way home yesterday from Dublin. 
Ooh, Supermax. Got myself two chicken drumsticks and chips. And my God, man, I was in cloud cuckoo land. It's good shit, man. It was so good that when I was eating the chicken, a bone got stuck on the top of my palate. And I, I was like, oh, fuck. Yanked it out. There was a bit of blood on my thumb then. And I was like, a bit of blood. It wasn't so bad. <laughs> but still, the chicken overrode all of the pain. <laughs> okay. It is that good, though, to be fair. You'll do anything for it. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most you do for chicken? For chicken? Mm-hmm. Like what's the furthest you'd go for like a, if you were, st- just say you were starving. You give a few scenarios there and I'll say if I'll do it or not. Some fella said you got to run 5k. For chicken? Mm-hmm. It's out. Okay, so you got to go over and kiss that goat's face. It's out. Okay. <laughs> um, you have to sleep naked in bed with your aunt. For like just two minutes. <laughs> For two minutes. And this is like you're starving and it's lo- lo- lovely chicken as well. Oh, I'm starving. I know what you're thinking. You're like, why can't I have both? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's tough. That's tough. Anyways, um, Ben Affleck, I don't know if it says fear he has relapsed. So that could be just made up. They don't know. It's just a picture taken from some stupid paparazzi bastard that's like taking it from a bush. And he looks like he's looking into a bag. How would they know that? It's all hearsay. It's all hearsay. It's all rumors. It's all inside. That's what they always they always say the stuff like inside mole or like a a close friend, but they don't really give you exactly who they're talking about. Just people who want drama. You think so? Yeah, yeah. Makes money. It makes money. Sells more papers, more clicks. Okay, moving on to the next bit. <laughs> Kevin Spacey's back in the game. Is he? I mean, I don't know what exactly the game is, but he's back doing interviews. He's back going on to TV shows and chatting about his life and how his... Because apparently some of the cases were overturned. Okay. It turns out some people are saying he's not dodgy anymore. I don't know. He seems... He seems, seems dodgy. a little dodgy. Like. Seems, yeah, he does. I always thought he was a bit dodgy. Though. You kind of get the vibe off him he's a bit dodgy. Mm. Like you wouldn't trust him alone if you are in the house. No, no. You wouldn't want to. Like. You wouldn't give him the key. You wouldn't give him a spare room for the back door. He just has that look about him. Like. Mm. Good yeah. actor though. Very good actor. Seven, great film. Yeah. American Beauty. Mm. He did another one as well, which is a great movie. It's uh, basically he's, I think he breaks up with the missus and then the daughter's living in some house and he has to go and stay in the daughter's house. And she's all like annoyed at him. He's got like a mullet. And he's like changing the paintings around the house and the daughter's like, would you just leave the painting where it is? Just taking over. He's just taking, he's not even trying to take over. He's trying to like do up the place a bit. And then the housemate who was another girl, she's like, oh, I think it's kind of nice to have around the place. That'd be a bit strange, though. Now, none of that stuff happened, mm. but eventually the daughter realised it was so nice to have her father around, and that father was Kevin Spacey, and he's back in the game. Okay. Why, well, he, does he have a film coming up or something? Probably, yeah. Probably got a book coming out or something like that. He was on the um, Axe, what you call that? what you call that Russian lad? Alex Freeman, is it? Oh, uh, Friedman, yeah. Yeah. I, I got his name wrong. He's kind of half Russian, half American. Yeah, yeah. He was on his podcast, and I listened to that last night going to bed for, it was like a three-hour podcast. What was he on about? For the first half, he was just telling stories about Jack Nicholson. And then I was <laughs> like, is he ever going to get to the point? <laughs> <What is he laughs> <laughs> so the reason Jack why he's on this podcast, and then I fell asleep, and it's in there somewhere, but I can't get it out. Right. Why was he on about Jack Nicholson? Because apparently Jack Nicholson was a lunatic altogether, so. Yeah, just good crack, like. Good crack, yeah. Okay. There was a funny scene. I'm not going to even try to replicate what he said, like, but there was a funny story he was telling about Jack Nicholson, who some lad walked into his trailer and Jack Nicholson was like, Hey, how you doing? He was like, he had no pants on. <laughs> All right. And then the guy was like, Oh yeah, sorry to bother you now, but I know you from a film years ago. We worked on a film and he, Jack Nicholson was like, what's the film? And he told him the film and he goes, Oh yeah, we were on a lot of drugs back in them days, but. <laughs> Uh, thank God we've stopped. And then his, he moved his pants and the, like a load of cocaine fell out of the pants. <laughs> yeah. And then he went to the other fellow, the fellow that was in the room. He goes, I have more of these pants since that movie. <laughs> and Kevin Spacey does it a lot better. Right. So Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Bit of a coke fiend. Oh, fucking. 
Fair play to him. He loved, he loved the smell of it. Fair play to him. Does, yeah. You'll be tempted by the smell of it sometimes. You telling me that you take cocaine? No, I said I'd be tempted. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course you would, man. Big difference. Yeah. yeah. Big difference. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> Please spread the word about this podcast. Now we're going to get into the meat and veg of the Euro Football Championships 2024. It's going to be great. It's going to be June. Sorry, was it June 14th? That's, that's right here, right, right now. now. Who's going to win it? France. Okay. Nobody else. No, like nobody says. No, zero stats to back it up. <laughs> France, they're too good, man. Yeah? Too good. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Mbappe. Just the whole squad. They're like nearly two squads. Who have they got in the squad? Let's have a look. Spain is always a good bet though as well. Spain, yeah. but France, yeah, they're, they're good, but they always have a falling out together, the French. You can't trust their temperament. Mm. You, you can't trust the temperament of the French. Olivier Giroud, Antonio Griezmann. Griezmann. These are all egomaniacs, man. Ah, uh, Mbappe. Mbappe, Dembele. yeah, Mbappe. But he's got a taste now, so he's he's going to be doing it. But he's so good that he will he'll go far. But I don't think they're going to win it. No. So who's going to win it? No, but I want you to argue back with me. But they're going to win it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Who else they got well, there in the team? Who do you think is going to win it? Why? Why would they beat France? You're not going to beat Germany. Germany. I'm telling you, man. No. They, have, have you seen the team? Have you seen the size of these new, young, fresh German? They do have Ritz. Power Fritz. Is it Fritz? Ritz, Ritz yeah. how he says his name? Fritz. He's very good. Yeah. I guarantee you, man, the Germans are the, uh, the team to look for. I don't know. France. France. They're just up there all the time. Though. You think so? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they always like, well, no, in fairness now, they won the World Cup not so long ago. They won it. It was Argentina last, wasn't it? Not that Argentina was At last, last, and, and they won it before that. them, wasn't it? And they won the last Euros. They won the last Euros. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mbappe, though, is pulling that team very far, and I think there's too much going on in that dressing room. Didier Deschamps or whoever's in there, it's just too much. You pass the ball, do what we want. We're friends. It's just the Germans are like, we will do our best to win. This is mm. racist, no? No. Good. <laughs> Good. I'll take your word for it. Um, we will do our best to win and we have a very efficient team, but we're strong and we know how to break it. You look at me like this is getting... That sounds kind of French. Well, because they're not on the border together, no? I suppose, yeah. Oh, wait, no. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were on about Germany there. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. That was a German accent I was doing. Oh, was it? Yeah. I thought it was French. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's not good. Okay. <laughs> You think France is going to win? I think Germany. France. We're going to put a little bet on. Who do you think is going to win? There's a big prize then into this, as in like the end of the competition. We're going to be putting on little mini games in between as well, aren't we? We are, yeah. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to find some very good winners. It's all very well planned out. Definitely. And I think Germany's going to win. If you think Germany's not going to win, let me know why. Let Adam know why. He's a bit of a football buff. I know lots. <laughs> What's your favourite... Um, Goal. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite goal. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. It's a question that boys ask each other. Jesus. Suarez. You remember when he scored four goals in one game? Who? Suarez for Liverpool. So you're picking four goals. Okay. Four goals. That's my favourite goal. <laughs> <laughs> Not even international teams, but fucking Suarez, the biting bastard. Mm. No, he's a great, great player. I'd say Liverpool's third best striker ever. Who do you have ahead of him? Torres and Robbie Fowler. Uh, I don't know. I'm telling you, man. I think Suarez is better. Ooh, I don't know about that now. You think so? I think so, yeah. Do the stats back it up? He nearly carried them to a title. Though. He did, in fairness to him. Very, very gifted player. But he won't be in these Euros. So... No. You think France, I think Germany. Let's see who else is playing here. There's Portugal. Portugal, okay. Spain. Well, Spain are always going to be there. England, England should have a chance, but... Will England win the Euros 2024? Final statement. England win? No. No. We're both going no. Tell everyone about this podcast, please. I personally think that Kim Jong-un 
she dress in leather pants only. Leather pants? Mm. Really? Okay, so we're back. Uh, oh. That's the end of the podcast for this week. Thanks very much for joining us. You've been great. Please subscribe to this video. And we're going to have a guest on next week. It's going to be a very special person. What's his name? Killian Groom. Strongest man in Ireland. Let's, let's get there. Any questions for him? Let us know in the comments below. Or email me at oncolly at gmail.com. Really appreciate having you here with us. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you for next week's episode. Every Friday at around the same time, roughly. Adam, thanks for being here. It's been a good time. Been a good time. Take it easy. This is the Owns Odyssey podcast. Thanks for being here.